Welcome everybody to the Marshall Thundering Herd Dynasty. We are two and one here in season number three at our bye week, and we have had some pretty big surprises in the early parts of this season. And I think the biggest one right now is Zach Trailer. He was a nobody last year, to be honest with you. Three sacks here through the first three games. He has been getting pressure every single game, it seems like. He and Michael Green are just going, you know, back to back with sacks, kind of trading off. And I've really, really enjoyed having him come off the edge this year. And it was something I was looking for coming into this year. So it's a great sight to see. Today, I want to talk recruiting and I want to talk about our biggest needs. So right now it's pretty early, but I do eventually want to talk about the future of certain positions, including defensive tackle. Right now, we don't have a great pass rushing defensive tackle on the squad. Kalechi Nwangwu is really the best and really only D tackle that's really been on the field and made some sort of an impact, but he is a non-factor rushing the passer just with stopping the run, and he is just a sophomore as well. So going into recruiting season, I really, really wanted to emphasize going after a top-tier defensive tackle, and we get that here with our number one recruit, Caleb Uche out of West Bloomfield, Michigan. It's between Michigan State, Purdue, and us, but we have really, really hit it hard with him, and we are now in the hard pitch, hard sell uh, you know, phase of the game. Look at his ratings, 87 finesse moves, 85 tackle, 80 acceleration, 80 pursue, 90 strength, 73 play rec, 75 speed. He is a very athletic defensive tackle. He's got good size too, 6'4", 280, with the pocket disruptor ability, which is amazing because I love that ability because it gives you, you know, an ability that moves the quarterback around. When you're not necessarily the one, you know, going to get the sack, he's just going to feel you in the pocket. Our second recruit is Gregory Gold. Now, we do have the option to schedule a visit with him, but as you know, guard and just all-around offensive line has been an issue so far through the first three games. We have actually given up a ton of pressures, so I think Gold is going to be at the top of this list right now. And looking at you know what he's looking for, he's looking to go to probably a big school, a championship contender. We have A- minus at the current moment. That is his uh, deal breaker, so... We are going to definitely pitch that hard. He has the pocket shield ability and PA shield. Really good pass blocking attributes. Run blocking is something to be worked on. He's got 69 run blocks. So I guess right now protecting the pass is maybe the biggest worry for our offensive line. I guess, you know, running the football has gotten easier as we're kind of getting used to having a power back like Dylan Gilliam in the backfield. Leon All is a really good tight end I want to recruit, and I said it before, I'll say it again, I need to recruit for the future too, and Leon All would not probably be in line to start right away at tight end because we have obviously Aiden Steinfeld there, but I do need to go for the future, and he could be a good guy We get in, redshirt him, and then start him in his second year. We do still need a future at pass rush. Michael Green is a, is a senior this year. And Zach Trailer is a junior. So I definitely want to, you know, kind of see guys for the future. Kari Spruce is one of those guys, 80 power moves, got the quick jump ability. And one thing about pass rush in this game, if you have an ability, it is a huge, huge advantage. So those are the guys I want to get in the door, the guys that have those abilities. Keelan Dobbs, a four-star uh, pass rusher. Not as good, I think, as Spruce, Pruce, but he's pretty talented. Now, we are in the lead right now for him. He's a good edge rusher. And then finishing out these top three linebackers we have on our board, Trent Sandlin. Now, he is a middle linebacker, so not much of a pass rusher, but he does have 86 speed, 91 excel, good pursuit, good tackling, good play rec. I think he's just going to be a guy that's going to make plays. And we have some abilities with our coaches right now to boost, linebacker boost in the offseason. So it's definitely a guy I want to get in the door and just develop him. Let's go back to defensive tackle because here down the board at number seven, we have Manny Hart. Not as good as what we saw from Uche, but good in his own right. Now, one thing, he does not have any abilities, but he is a four-star gem. So he could come in with a high development tra trait. We don't know what that would be, but at least an impact. And then there's Darren Cano, who is also a gem four-star prospect. He is ranked 447 in the nation. Uh, 31 at defensive tackle. Really, really good player. Now, it's 
pretty early in the stages of recruiting him. Uh, but we'll see if we end up going hard after him, depending on the, you know, the outcome of Uche and Hart. The next guy I'm going to struggle to say, Quincy Hadrulahu is his name. 93 speed, 96 excel. Now, he has abilities with takeoff and layout. Now, he looks a lot like Brandon Spadell does, but I know he's going to come in with the higher overall because he's got great release, great deep route running as a freshman, I'm saying. 82 catching, 87 spectacular catch. And he's got 78 catching traffic. I really, really like those numbers coming in right now. And he also has physical and mental abilities. Carl Regis is another edge rusher I'm looking at here. He's got 80 power moves, and he looks like an every down defensive end. 6'6", 248. I look at him. He's coming from Green Bay, Wisconsin. We are beating Wisconsin, Iowa State, and Charlotte for him. But I look at his abilities, and he just looks like a good player player and a guy that can even sit a year and learn from our veterans and come in and really make an impact I really really like his abilities I don't want to necessarily go too hard after receiver but I do have a couple on the board Cameron Trout he's a four star 80 route running uh, 90 speed 80 catch in traffic now the one difference between this crop of receivers and last year's crop of receivers is that this year's crop has way higher starting attributes so they're already in the 80s last year they were kind of in the 70s high speed but in the 70s so this year i really want to get guys that are ready to play sooner rather than later i think we're finding that out that it's kind of hit and miss not everybody's gonna be ready to play at receiver right away and then there's brady freeman so i add three receivers to the board this year and we'll see if we get them. I mean, there's there's a chance that we may not get all these guys. So I do want to add options to the board. Freeman does have good spectacular catch, catching traffic, route running. He's an all-around good player. And right now we are in first place, but in a close race with Cincinnati. The next guy I highlighted here on the board that rounds out the top 13 players and the guys I'm really, really going after, Joey Hart. Don't really know too much about him right now, but he is a four-star. I do eventually want to add points to him. But I think we're going to have to wait to see how the other outcomes do end up shaking out. And we have 600 recruiting hours this year. So I definitely want to, you know, start to use those points and go after a wider range of prospects. So we advance on in the bye week and we end up getting a commitment from Caleb Uche. So now we have an even scarier pass rush come next year because Uche, to me, has the skill set that could start right away as our rush defensive tackle, even as a true freshman. Michael Green is going to be graduating this coming year. He is a senior, so we definitely need to shore that up and make sure there's no drop-off. But obviously there will be. It's Michael Green. I mean, he is amazing. But our championship contender goes up to an A, so that should help us in recruiting. But after simulating, we get like a weird, just a weird, I don't know if this is a bug or what, but because we didn't play a game last week, our playing style now goes down to a D plus for receivers. I don't know where that came from because it really came out of nowhere. And if you look at what we need for playing style for physical receivers, it's receiving yards per game. So I guess since we simulated a week, our receiving yards per game went down. I'm not exactly sure, but now there's a deal breaker with those two receivers. So now we re-enter Big 12 Conference play, playing against Kansas State, and they are 4-0 on the season, undefeated coming into our building. So we want to make sure that ends. They are 3-0, sorry. But Marshall, number 14 in the country at this point, 0-1 in Big 12 Conference play after losing to Houston early on. And they have a decent quarterback in Jacob Knuth. Now, one thing I do want to emphasize with a lot of these quarterbacks in the Big 12, they all are really accurate. They all are really capable of running the football for the most part. I mean, it's a it's a talent group that we didn't have necessarily in the Sun Belt. So we could be in for a lot of shootouts this year. I guess we'll have to see, though. But defensively, they do have Asu, Asu, Asun Sanmi. I can't say that name too fast. Asun Sanmi who is a really good pass rusher so far for them in his senior season. Four and a half sacks through the first three games. We definitely got to watch out for him. And as you know, college football 25, it's tough to block for against these elite pass rushers. So here we go. Let's get this game underway as we do receive the opening kickoff. Here is Brandon Spadell already returned two kick returns for touchdowns this year, and he takes it back 
to about the 18 as here comes Cole Pennington, the senior, out to lead this squad. He gives it off to Dylan Gilliam, coming off of a 100-yard game on the ground and catching the football. Pennington now stepping up in the pocket, throwing across the middle, and he's got Dewan Whitehead, the sophomore, and he picks up a big first down catch and run. So first and 10 now, back to Gilliam, good blocking, and he picks up a gain of nine. Gilliam is surprisingly like not too slow to play with. 88 Excel, 88 speed, you think it would be slower. Here's a jet, jet sweep touch pass to the outside, Trey Allen. He gets inside the 20. And we are set up here in the red zone already after just a few plays. At the 19 now, here is Pennington throwing across the middle. He's got Whitehead, who gets a block downfield. Touchdown. Where did Trey Allen come from on that? That was a perfect block. He puts on the crown, and what a start to this game here for Marshall. It's 7-0 here at home in front of this sold-out crowd, by the way. Look at that stadium pulse. It's all the way up today. Here is Kansas State on offense. This is a jet sweep touch pass to number 13, Quinton Rice, and he gets to the outside, and that is a big first down run. And that is the freshman Julian Watford for the tackle. Hand off to number four, that's Joe Jackson, their leading running back in this backfield. He picks up one. Zach Trailer there on the stop that time. We send pressure to the right side. That is caught, and he spins away. He gets around the freshman Watford, and they will score right away. Trey Spivey scores for a 50-yard touchdown catch and run. What an athletic play right there, showing off the strength. And they tie this ball game up just like that. 7-7 seven, seven now, Gilliam with the carry out of the pistol formation. He picks up a gain of six. I said it, we added to the playbook the pistol, so we're going to come out here with another one. This time a pistol spread. Here's a lob to the right side. Good protection, and he finds Spadell. That one's a big first down catch and run. And Dalen Gilliam is shaken up on that play. The crowd is still going hype, though. So here we go across the 50. Here is Brian Santana checking to the game, and the pressure gets to Pennington, and he goes down an 11-yard loss on that sack. Third and 21 now at the 45. Pennington trying to buy time, throwing to the sideline, looking for Spadell again. Knocked down. And here comes Kansas State back on offense. Jacob Newth with the play action fake, throwing to left side, and that is going to be caught, but a loss of maybe a yard. Knuth now in the shotgun, and it looks like going to be false start on the offense. So they're moving back for even a longer conversion here. Third and 14. Screen pass out to the left side. This is to Joe Jackson, and he will not get to the first down sticks. And we do force the punt. Good field position to start this next drive. Here is Gilliam showing off some speed, breaking a tackle. And a tough gain of six right there. We eventually get it to a third and one. Back to Gilliam, and the power back falls forward. He stuffed just short. It's fourth and inches now at the 43, and it looks like Coach Jay is going to line up to go for it. Because here is Pennington now, hanging it off to Brian Santana. And it's a first down carry for just over a yard. Santana remains in the game now for pass pro. Here is Pennington loading up, throwing this one deep, and he's got a man. It's Jaden Gordon Jr., and he's pushed out at the one. Not really known much for his speed, but he is the backup slot receiver. Goal to go now. Gilliam walks in for the score. And Marshall will take the one score lead in this one. Off of that great dime of a throw by Pennington setting up the short touchdown run. So here we go back on defense. We rush five on this one. Here's a throw to left side. A good play by Corey Myrick. Tight window throw by Knuth, third and seven. More pressure on him. He loads up and throws this one deep. He gets hit on that throw in the air and almost intercepted. And now we get possession right back after a punt. Pressure around the right edge, and Pennington hit hard. And they're sending pressure on us today, bringing us to a third and 13. Pennington in the pocket, steps up, hit on the throw again. And we have to punt it away now to Kansas State. 
Come out here in the I formation. Joe Jackson lined up deep. And the pressure gets to Knuth. And guess who? It's Michael Green for his first sack of the evening. And also getting a little chippy with the quarterback that time. Second and 19, handoff. This is Jackson to the outside. He gets a lot of that yardage back. Does get pushed out of bounds. Five yards short of the first down marker, third and five. A quick throw to the sideline, a little high. But Trey Spivey, who scored earlier, brings that one down. So now here we go, six minutes to go here in the first half. Pressure on Knuth. He's moving, and he gets hit on that throw. And I believe that was Keyshawn Lamont on the pressure. So here we go on the next drive, handing it off to Gilliam. That's not going to work, and it's going to be a flag anyway coming back. And we will lose a few yards on that one. That is the true freshman, uh, Lloyd Thurman, who gets called for the penalty. First and 19, now back at the nine, running Trey Allen in motion. Here's Pennington loading up and throwing this one deep. And he's got Allen. He's brought down at the 45. Pressure sent by Kansas State. It does not work. At the 50 now, Pennington throwing across the middle. It's Spadell. Wide open and using those long legs and picking up a first down. Brandon Spadell is only about six feet tall, by the way, but he runs like he is much longer. Here's a throw across the middle. Pressure getting to Pennington. Incomplete. Second and 10. Draw play. Santana. He gets hit for a gain of four. Injury on the field for Kansas State. Brings it to a third and six. A throw across the middle. And it's a back shoulder to Jaden Gordon. Around the edge. He gets to, oh, the one-yard line. Maybe even the inch-yard line. That was a great throw by Pennington, avoiding the linebacker. First and goal. Hand off. Gilliam. Touchdown. What a drive by the Thundering Herd. How about Jaden Gordon today, though, making an impact? And he is technically the fourth receiver on the depth chart two and a half minutes to go here in the first half up by two scores play action fake it's Michael Green again you can't get away from him whatever you do you got a shade blocking his direction because he will make you pay second and 16 we rush three we get to Knuth he dumps it off to the tight end and actually loses yards on that one maybe a yard or two third and long again for Kansas State here is pressure. It's a sack. Zach Trailer gets to the quarterback. And the right tackle did not do Knuth any favors. Look at that. Just Trailer doesn't even get touched on that play. Goes straight, unevaded to the quarterback. Here is Pennington now. Throw into the right side to start the next drive. There's Allen. Such a good route runner, man. These seniors are really, really showing up in this series. I feel like. It's maybe baked into the game where seniors just play well. I'm not sure. Oh, there's a tough run. It's Gilliam. Let's take a look at that again. Absolutely punishes that man and picks up the first down. 36-yard line now, 50 seconds to go. They send an all-out pressure. Here's a quick throw. It's DeJuan Whitehead around the edge. Touchdown. But did he step out of bounds there? And it looks like his toe just grazes the white line. And they will bring this play all the way back. Now 40 seconds to go. Second and 10. Pennington under pressure. And I think he just, his eyes just got big that time. I think he was staring down a receiver and ended up losing a bunch of yards. Back at the 35 now. Third and 21. A wide open Trey Allen. Nobody was near him. And another defender made a tackle. If that route wasn't close to the other route, that was a touchdown, by the way. Will Shoemaker comes in for the field goal. We end up making that one. And now we go into halftime with a pretty big lead. 24-7 to here to start the second half. Kansas State has not been able to do anything on offense besides one big play. And there is a stop by Jaden Yates, the senior. He's having a great season, by the way. Another handoff this time. Jason Clark runs him down in the backfield. And how about these linebackers making plays today? We've been waiting for this day. Third and 13. Screen pass called. And this is not going to work. The freshman Jason Keener is there for the first hit. And we do force the punt here to start the second half. Here comes the red-hot offense on the field. Trey Allen with the catch. 
He gets bullied right there. He had the first down and he just lost it. Third and one now. Here's Gilliam. He's got a first down easily. 10 carries for him for 40 yards on the evening. Like I said, I don't want to necessarily give him too many carriers to wear him down because we need him late. And there is a nice play by the defense tipping that screen pass out the line. It's now a third and eight in the pocket, throwing across the middle. That's caught. It's Jaden Gordon again. I just love the way he plays. He's not the fastest. He just gets it done. A good route runner. And off back to Gilliam this time. Good blocking. He picks up five to the 42, and now it is a third and five again. Pennington in the pocket. They send a lot of pressure. Here's a throw across the middle and a drop. Dewan Whitehead had it. Maybe a little behind him, but Whitehead should have had it. Fourth and five. Here's a throw, and that's a wide open Trey Allen. We convert anyway, putting on a move and getting to the 22-yard line. Four minutes to go here in the third. We're inside the red zone. Here's a toss play from the I formation. There's a nice catch, a nice run, and that is a good first down carry. And I, I got to just point out something. How about the left guard, Jalen Slappy, who, remember, we put back in the lineup. He put a, a block down downfield. But here's a throw across the middle and intercepted. Well, we ruined that drive right there. Being a little too greedy, we probably should have kept running the football, and it results in a turnover. They're still down 24-7, though, but here's Knuth back on the field. There's a nice concept throwing up the seam, and there is a catch by the running back, and it's a first down. Joe Jackson's been bottled up on the ground today. He gets one through the air. There is a nice RPO. Only a gain of four, though. There's Jaden Yates again making a play. Third and six now. We send some pressure from the secondary on this one. Throw it to the sideline, and they call that a catch, actually. So we enter the fourth quarter. Now Kansas State with some long down and distance this time, and this is going to be... A catch for about a gain of four after a penalty. Third and 13, here is Knuth. No pressure, throwing, short. Tackled at about the 42, about a yard short of the first down marker. And now they line up for a field goal. This is from 59 yards. They are crazy. The kick is, wow, good by about five yards. A 59 yarder, he could have probably made that from 65. Now we're up by 14. Eight minutes to go here in the fourth. Here is Pennington, throw into the right side. It's somehow somebody comes down with it. It's Jaden Gordon Jr. with another big catch today. Here's a handoff now back to the run game and Gilliam fights forward for a gain of four. Usually these, after a while, these four yard carries are gonna start to wear down this defense. There's a nice throw to Aiden Steinfeld. He picks up the first down to about the 50. Under six minutes to go now. Here is a quick throw across the middle. Dewan Whitehead with another catch and another first down for this offense. Cole Pennington over 350 yards passing today. Changing the play at the line this time with Gilliam in the backfield. RPO action throwing out to Whitehead again and he's got some speed but does get run down for about a gain of six. But Pennington likes that a lot. Efficient offense here for the Marshall Thundering Herd. Here's a handoff and Gilliam fighting forward. Another first down carry. He's got two on the ground today already. Three minutes to go. This is a long drive. Handoff. Santana now getting in the action. Inside the 15 on that carry. And now we are continuing to run the football. You can kind of see the trend here. Here is Santana showing off some strength. Carrying a couple defenders. And now here we are inside the 10 now. Running Gilliam in motion, play action fake, throwing out to Gilliam. He's all alone. He's just going to take off. Touchdown. That was actually a design double pass, but Gilliam had the awareness of just taking himself. And technically, it was thrown behind the line. It's his third rushing touchdown of the game. You see the defender almost tipped that one, by the way. But Gilliam takes it in, and it's now a route. 31 to 10 here. I'm not sure many people saw this coming. Maybe they did. We're a top 15 ranked team. Here's a throw across the middle by Knuth, finding the tight end, Garrett Oakley. And now here we go, a minute 15 to go. Quick throw, and that's caught. Andre Davis chasing Clark there for the stop. 
And now here they are again at the 30-yard line. Pressure, and that's a sack. It's Michael Green again, his third sack of the day. 51 seconds to go now. It's a third and 12. Knuth in the pocket, running out of time. It's a sack. That time it was the freshman Tim Ramesh who gets in. He actually knocks him into the legs of Michael Green, so Michael Green gets a half sack credit on that. And now it's fourth and 22. Here's a quick throw. It's caught, but not enough for the first down. And that will do it. Marshall with the domination today. We took a big lead in the first half and did not look back. Cole Pennington was great today. Besides that one interception, we were being a little greedy there. That was obviously our fault. <laughs> 436 yards of total offense, nearly 200 more yards than Kansas State had. That was a dominant game. I don't think they did one thing well, to be honest with you. Um, on the ground, 18 for 77 for three touchdowns for Gilliam, continuing off of last week's performance, and he just looks impressive so far in his career. I was really impressed today by Jaden Gordon. He had four catches, didn't have any drops, and he seems like just a reliable target. We registered him last year. Like I said, he was 57 overall and he went all the way up to 71 in one offseason. That's an amazing, amazing uh, progression for him. Our offensive line had a great game too, to be honest with you. Like we gave up some pressures, but for the most part, like our offensive line was pretty dominant. Michael Green with three and a half today. Zach Trailer had one. Tim Ramesh had a half sack. I mean, what can you say about this pass rush? There was a reason why, you know, I decided to play Tim Ramesh early on in his career because he was a four-star prospect, and I can already see when he gets in the game, when he does need to give, you know, a guy like Michael Green a breather getting after the passer, like he is capable. So I'm definitely going to, you know, play him a lot this year and really – Maybe even groom him to be the future at pass rusher um, after Michael Green. Michael Green with the five tackle for loss game as well. I should highlight that, but three and a half sacks. He ends up being National Defensive Player of the Week. And here we are with the Big 12 standings. Everybody started out pretty well. West Virginia's 4-0. TCU is 4-0. They are the number three team in the country. TCU is. We are 3-1. We're in ranked number 11. Louisiana is 2-2. Two two. We face them soon. And then Texas Tech is 2-1. They are still a top 25 team at number 16. But so far, I think the story has really been the pass rush we are getting after. And Michael Green adds a few more sacks to the total. And that would actually land him at third in the nation right now with six sacks, tied for third. So he is having an amazing, amazing season. Now, early on, as you do start to redshirt guys and guys start to play I do like to go back on game number four and you know reevaluate our red shirts and Tracy Augustine who has just not made an impact I'm just going to redshirt him there's no need to play him we have other guys that kind of do what he does and probably better and in the limited playing time he's had I just don't think he's ready to play Tim Ramesh I also took, took a hard look at him but as you saw in that game and we've seen in earlier games he's already got a sack to his name and not many people have a sack through the first four games and he's only played about 10 15 snaps not even 15 he's probably played like 10 snaps and he's already got a sack so uh and I gotta say he's got like three pressures as well like three pressures and one whole sack and 10 snaps that's pretty good so I want to see what he's got so one change I'm probably going to be making here in this series is upping the injuries. I have not seen any at all. Like pretty much the injuries that I've seen have been, you know, drive injuries, meaning you're out for a drive or two or you're out for maybe even a quarter, but no long-term injuries. So hopefully boosting that up will help with it. I'm not exactly sure, but I'm going to test it. Probably going to bump it up to 60 to see how that works. But next episode, we continue Big 12 Conference play versus Louisiana who's really developed a rivalry with us in this series. And then we also play Texas State, who made the national championship last year. So that's going to do it here. Hit subscribe. Hit that like button. Stay tuned. Let's get it. Let's go.